As I read Genesis chapter 1, I'm struck by a lot of what goes on here. You know, there are a lot of uh, creation narratives in the ancient world. All the different societies had them for the most part. And they, they differ from each other in some of the details, of course, but this one in Genesis chapter 1 differs from them in its entirety at the most profound levels. The main reason it does that is because it views all things as coming from a creator that goes beyond and is outside of the universe itself. And the second way that it is separate and different than those other creation accounts is the fact that all the heavenly bodies, the, the sun, the moon, and the stars, they are in the scriptural account to mark or to measure the days and the seasons. But in the ancient world, those things were regarded as divine. If you looked at the stars in the sky, you viewed them as some sort of a god. And you find that in different ways in different cultures. But here, they're not divine. They're not gods. They are works of God's hand. It's a very profound difference between the account of Genesis 1, then, than what you would find if you looked at the accounts of creation in Babylon or Egypt or the other cultures. One of the things that really brings this together then is this idea that God is above and beyond everything. He is, first of all, the source of everything. He creates. That word create there in Genesis 1 is, I believe, only used of God. God is the only subject to that verb in the entire Old Testament, in the whole Hebrew Bible. We, as humans, fashion and form. So we make things, but God creates. God brings something from nothing. And again, that's very different than the other creation stories around the people of Israel. So he brings forth the universe out of nothing. Uh, the Latin word phrase for that is ex nihilo. You might have heard that. Now, this is important. This means that fundamentally, there are, as it were, two elements of reality. There is this physical universe. But beyond that and transcending that and coming before that, in a sense, there is a spiritual realm of which at least God is there and, uh, and perhaps other beings as well. But at least there is a creator God who was within that. So reality has at least two dimensions. I won't say two parts because you can't really separate them. But the idea is that all that is here is not simply material. Now, again, that's very different. If you look at the the accounts of, of Zeus, or you look at the accounts of, of German mythology or Egyptian mythology, the gods there are not totally transcendent creators outside the universe who brought it into existence. They're, for the most part, I mean, every, every culture is a little different. They're most part superheroes. They are very much like us. They have human bodies. They can even be shot with arrows and shoot with arrows, literally. And yet they're they're somewhat immortal and uh, depending on, again, the culture and the God, and they're stronger. They're not necessarily wiser. They are certainly not more moral. I mean, just look at all the stories of Zeus. You don't have to see uh, too many of those to figure out this guy is a rascal. They're, they're just stronger. They're more powerful. They've been around for a long time. But they're not creators. They are not totally separate beings. They are not above and beyond all the ups and downs of this world and all the immorality and wrong that, of this world as well. They are not holy. Because that's really what the word holy means. It doesn't just mean a good person or a good God. It means a transcendence beyond this physical universe. I see that right at the start then in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, Kai created the heavens and the earth. I'm not going to leave you here though. This implies that however many steps or however long that time a process was between then and now, and between more particularly my then and my birth, that I am the creation of somebody else. I am here not by my own choice. I am here not as a fate of accident. I am here because someone else chose to create me. He is what's called a necessary being in the sense that we can't do without him, but we are contingent beings. We did not have to be here. All of us are contingent beings 
In all our life, we live a contingent existence. And the problem is we do not live fully in line with that truth. We tend to view ourselves as autonomous. We forget in the day to day that we are dependent upon someone else for our very existence. And therefore, whatever I do as response to him is only right and just and probably wise. I think that may be what Paul had in mind in Romans 1, where he says that humanity knew God, they knew about God, but they rejected that knowledge of him or suppressed the knowledge that he was that God. And they made idols and smaller gods and, uh, and bowed down to worship them because they weren't quite so as invisible and demanding and unpredictable as this holy God. Let's not make the same mistake. I hope that in this year we grow. We grow in living the life as created contingent beings before God.